perspective. At halftime, the University of Tennessee Pride of the Southland Band, joined by George Pizzas in a patriotic salute. The highlight bingy being the singing of America the Beautiful. I grew up in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I was an ice hockey player at the time and played as far as the junior team. Next would be the pro team. And then my father, being a priest, got transferred to Spartanburg, South Carolina, where we had no ice at all, so I had to change my interests. And then I went to a movie one time and saw Mario Lanza in one of his movies. And I said, wow, that looks pretty good. I think I'll try that. Of course, I, then I got in the choir, the choir at Spartanburg High School. They thought the damn Yankee over there was singing flat. So we had an audition for Wizard of Oz, and I auditioned. I had the part of the doctor, you know. As coroner, I must have thoroughly examined her, and she's not only merely dead, she's really most sincerely dead. That was my lines. And they said, well, I guess it wasn't that damn Yankee after all singing flat. So my career kind of took over from there. My next job was with Converse College, which I graduated from with my master's. I was singing at June Luska. It's a Methodist assembly. Had a quartet, a paid quartet there, and I was the tenor in the quartet. Somebody told me about an opening at UT. So I called and said, I'm going to be coming through, which was a lie. And I said, I'm going to be coming through. Can I audition and do it, you know, do your whatever you want me to do. Next day they gave me the job. And that was my job from then on. Till I retired in 2000, I guess. Jay Julian had a program that was going to be from Bach to Bluegrass. In between it was La Donna Mobile. So I got up and sang that. And then he said, you want to try the National Anthem next week? That's the way that started from then on for 28 years. Never missed a performance. It was scary at first, so I wrote the words on my hand to make sure I didn't miss it the first time. There was no opera at the time. The UT would try and put it on an opera every now and then, but most of it was sung by us, by the faculty and students together. You know, Mary Costa was in town at the time, so the first opera was done with her, I think. I was in the second opera, if I'm not mistaken. Then Robert and I, sat down one Saturday and we talked about starting the opera company at UT. I said, well, I can't do it without our department, our area head knowing. So that, at the time it was Edward Zambara. So I brought him in with Robert and myself. Three of us sat down, talked about it, and here we, that's the way the, that's the way it got started. I think this whole scene has become very good, not only in opera, but in Broadway shows. Greek festival and the, you know, all those things that came about. Lisa, she's a loving wife. She's everything. I can't say enough about her. Tried to contribute as much as I could. I sang at just about any time they would ask me to do something. I mean, like even starting the, the, the beginning of the World's Fair. I opened up a World's Fair also sang at the Montreal and the New York World's Fair. I also sang at both of those. Oh, Sequoia Hills was one of the best times I ever had. 23 years, and I loved every minute of it. I still call it my home church, really, even though I'm Greek Orthodox. I think probably the biggest thing I contributed to the music scene is my teaching. The thing I remember most about Mr. Bitsis is how much he cared for all of his students. He was always encouraging us to be better than we were. He was one of the best teachers I ever had. He was dedicated to his students in a way that was father-like. He, he was more than a teacher, more than a coach to me. He, he saw me as a human being and he really uh, showed through his actions his interest in my development as a human being and a person that uh, could carry himself well into the world after. Not a day of my teaching goes by 
without quoting something George has taught me or reflecting on something I learned from him in a lesson, truly, every day that I teach. And I'm so glad that you are receiving this honor. It was an honor to work with you in, at the uh, University of Tennessee. I really can't think of anyone more worthy of this celebration than George Bitsis. Mr. Bitsis, thank you for your impact, for your influence in my life, uh, but also in the lives of so many other singers through the years. Thank you so much for all you taught me. You built my foundation, which I continue to share with my students today. Mr. Bitsis, thank you. Thank you for everything you have given to me. So much of what I am today and who I am today can be traced back to you. He has golden ears, but more importantly, he has such a beautiful golden heart. And congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Bitsis. Take care. I think it's important to say thank you to the camarada and to the opera company for having me do this. I've learned that I was only the second person to ever do it. And it was, you know, it's important to, to also say people support the operas, support Support music in Knoxville. Support everything you can as far as uh, performance is concerned. And please, please give.